welcome to the Discover Universal podcast. <laughs> Keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle. <sighs> and watch your step on the moving walkway because we're taking you park to park to prepare you for your next visit. Let's Discover Universal. Welcome to the Discover Universal podcast. I'm Velasa Carey, and I'm the alpha of the pack. And I'm Velasa David, and this podcast episode has uh, found a way. What an incredible imitation you just did. No, that was a a, a pale imitation of, of the true a artistry. A paleontological imitation. I have to go. We are here, as you can tell. Of Dr. Malcolm. Yes. It was not even close. We are uh, going on a deep dive of the Jurassic World Velocicoaster today. We are coming up on the two-year anniversary. There's a lot that we have covered in terms of that area of Universal Islands of Adventure. But today, we are we are going deeper. We are taking almost a scientific look oh. at this attraction. We're going to go get our, our little brushes out. We're going to go do an archaeological <laughs> dig. That would actually be really fun. Uh, I'm so excited. We have a great interview. We have Greg from Creative and Shelby here today. Uh, they worked on the original designs of the attraction, yeah. and they know everything there is to know about Jurassic World Velocicoaster. We cannot wait well, to I pick their brains. So. Well, as they should, of course. So let's get deep diving on this incredible, ferocious ride. Rawr. Carrie, you're talking a deep dive. I am. This coaster has a very deep dive. Yeah, we don't play. From the top of the 155-foot-tall top hat. Top hat. That That is a cool little piece of lingo that we're going to get into yeah. a little bit later when we talk about all the different components. It's so iconic. You can see that thing everywhere. You can see it right when you come in the park yes. across the lagoon. Yes. You can see it when you're driving down the road. I was at this past week. I had some friends in town. Yes. We did the parks a lot, but we also we were at Universal's Volcano Bay, yeah. and we were on top of one of the slides, and you look over, and it's like, there's Velocicoaster. It's beautiful. It, it has changed the, the skyline, yeah. which is really neat. Okay, before we get too far, people are going, what's a top hat? Let's, let's, let's break it down. What is Jurassic World Velocicoaster? For someone who has no idea, who has clearly been living in the dark for two years, explain to them what, uh, what this coaster is made up of. It's made of metal. All right. All okay. right. All right, smarty pants. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry. Jurassic World Velocicoaster yes. is a thrilling, high-speed, intense roller coaster yes. uh, that resides over in the Jurassic Park section of Universal Islands of Adventure. Yes. Uh, it opened back in uh, June of 2021. Yes. Uh, so we're coming up on about two years that it's been open. Very cool. And it's it's incredible. It's what they call the apex predator of roller coasters. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I read that somewhere. I, I thought it looked really cool. It sounded neat. And it is. I yeah. Yeah. I will say we have lots of amazing roller coasters here at the park. Yes. And I think each of them has their own thing that they do really well and that makes them really exciting. Yep. I think Jurassic World Velocicoaster is probably the most thrilling. I would definitely agree with you. Yes. Yes. I don't want to get in trouble. No. I'll say it's the best, but it's pretty good. It's pretty great. It's incredible. It uh, When you say thrilling, it, there is it's a, a max speed of 70 miles per hour. Yeah. Um, there are... Many different raptors as part of not only the queue, but the literal roller coaster environment itself. Yeah. There's there's like dinos everywhere. There's raptors everywhere. There's two statues at the entrance. There's there's four dino four raptors on the statue. There's ones in the window. There's two animated figures. Uh there's four in the launch. There's four in the first area of the ride. Th like I said, they're everywhere. Carrie, you make a very good point. Chock full. There are a lot of velociraptors in this ride. Ding, ding. And there's a lot of amazing uh, story in this ride. Oh, yeah. If the Jurassic World lore and, and sort of the continuation of that lore yes. is your jam, this coaster is is full of really cool Easter eggs of uh, special moments. You're going to recognize characters from the film, characters from the franchise, um, and you're going to re-fall in love with them all over again. I think I said this in one of our earlier episodes when we talked about it. But I think one of the things that I love so much about it is like the movie Jurassic World is about like the dinosaur theme park, like being open and in operation. Yeah. Yep. And so like when you're on this ride, you're in the park. Yes. You're, you're in Jurassic you're guest, World. Right. And this is like, 
they they set it up in the pre-show where we have the the characters Owen Grady and Claire Deering, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and they say like, you know, we wanted to bring more thrill to the park and more teeth, and so we put a roller coaster in the Velociraptor paddock. <laughs> that always works out so and then, well. And then Owen Grady is like, this is a crazy idea, and uh, and so yeah, so that, so the ride goes from there. I mean, you launch inside the Velociraptor paddock, you're twisting and turning and inverting all all through the the paddock in the first half of the Raptors next to you, and then you break out of the paddock. Uh, and start doing some speed runs along the Universal Islands of Adventure Lagoon as well. Oh, for sure. Um, which is a really exciting second half of the coaster as well. Well, let's let's maybe break it down a little bit further because uh, I know there's some nuts and bolts, and I, I definitely want to get to that a little bit later. But now seems like a good time to go through the ride components. And yeah. when I say that, I mean uh, there are – we talked about the top hat earlier. That's kind of that great, big, huge hill. But there are special moments all throughout. So, David, take it away with, with uh, uh, the first component of the coaster. All right. So we're at the load station. Yes. We're about to get on the ride. Yes. We're 51 inches or taller. Yes. <laughs> Gotta be. you've gotten to this point. Gotta be. Uh, so the train itself is quite long. It's it's actually 24 riders per train mm -hmm. uh, sitting two by two. Um, there's no over-the-shoulder harnesses. No. There's It's it's a lap bar harness. It does kind of kind of come over the top of your head, but it's yes. just a lap bar. Yes. Um, Though it is very secure. Yes, of course. You are very secure, but it does create a very unique possibility. Yes. Uh, involving airtime. Oh, yeah. So we'll get there. There's we'll a lot of airtime in this coaster. So you're kind of like in the control room uh, by the time you're getting on the roller coaster. You can you can like see the control room. You can see out into the Raptor paddock. Yes. Keep an eye out. You, you can see like Velociraptor scratches on some of the concrete <sighs> out in the paddock. So many details. So cool. It was great. So then the coaster rolls out. And then you, your your first stop is, um, it's kind of like the the holding pen area for the Velociraptors. Yeah, a paddock maybe. And and the coolest thing is you can see them on either side of the train. Yeah, you're literally running. So you got with Blue the pack. and Charlie and Delta and, and Echo next to you, and uh, and they're like ready to go. They're like, yes. Let's go. Let's run. Let's run. Yeah. And then uh, and you hear Owen Grady's voice. He's like, "All right, we're doing this." Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and and like the doors open and the Velociraptors go running out and you go running out with them. And that's what we call our first launch. The first launch. Yes. The first launch uh, launching us from a standstill zero miles per hour to 50 miles an hour. That's a lot. In like two seconds. Quick. Yes. Uh, it 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 shoots you out of this, uh, this paddock and, oh, and yeah. you're running alongside them. I guess Velociraptors accelerate very quickly. Seems like it. Yeah, because yeah. the roller coaster sure does. Yes. So now we're in the first section. Uh, there's a lot of lot of maneuvers here. A lot to see. Uh, coaster enthusiasts may uh, may know better than I do, but there's there's words like Immelman dives and things like Whoa. that. Whoa. I know. They're all like acrobatic moves and things like this. Basically, for the layman, a lot of twists and turns. Twists and turns. And inversions. <laughs> That's the key point here. Yeah. Um, this roller coaster goes upside down many times. Mm -hmm. Uh, and because of that very unique lap bar support there, yes. you get some airtime. I you, love that component. Your butt comes out of the seat like a little inch there, and you feel your stomach up and everything. <laughs> again, again, you're very secure. Definitely. You're very secure. You're not going anywhere. But still thrilling. But, boy, is it exciting. It's incredible. That like That's just the first section. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot more to come. You're twisting and turning. You're going through all these rocks. You're blasting right by some of the velociraptors that are in yes. the paddock, and they're like, ah! Yep, you, you hear those by. screams. Yep, and then, then we go into... The second launch. The second launch. Launching us from a paltry 40 miles an hour to 70 miles an hour. This is your max speed, people. Yes. Okay, we are up to 70 MPH. We have just blasted by another section of running raptors. And this is like a straightaway moment. So like you can really feel that that crisp acceleration. Oh, yeah. And then your your face like, you know, like, <laughs> I'm, I will say not yeah. yours. My face was like, <laughs> and then comes uh, some of the, the, the named the maneuvers. The top hat. The top hat. The top hat. Tell them about the top hat. Well, it's tall. It is. It's 155 feet tall. Yes. You go straight up that thing mm -hmm. and basically straight back down. Yeah. It's at some crazy, I think it's like an 80 degree angle or something like that. It's very almost straight down. tall, narrow hill. You have a very incredible moment. Okay. There's a lot of sensations here mm -hmm. because you're going full speed launch into this thing, mm -hmm. right? And you kind of crest at the top. So there's the, oh my gosh, we're going straight up. There's a beautiful little moment at the top where things slow down. And you're like, oh, look around. Look at Universal Islands of Adventure. Look at the sky. Look at where I parked. And then right, right down, down into it. <laughs> it's a it, very brief moment to yes. look around. Yeah. And then right down, you get all that speed back. You blast right by the Discovery Center. All those people standing in the queue out there on the plaza near the water. Yep. Uh, and then 
there's some really fun kind of long stretches of twists and turns. Uh, there's one portion where you go into an inverted stall mm-hmm. where it flips you upside down and then it like leaves you there for a couple seconds Yeah. Uh, rather than just kind of completing the corkscrew. Yeah. Whips you around, whips you around again, and then it lines up for that final pass, Ooh. just like skimming the water over the lagoon. <gasps> and that's your favorite part. That's the Mosasaur roll. That's our, like the water dinosaur. Yeah, the very one. big one. Yeah, with like the flippers. In the movie, they like, Feed him a great white shark. Yeah, and that's it's like, the one. Rawr, yeah. And it jumps out and eats it. And you, you that feel, does not happen. You don't get eaten by a giant shark dinosaur. Definitely not. On this no ride. shark eating but or being eaten by. You kind of wonder if you might, because you, oh boy, you feel close to that water. You really do when you do that roll. Yes, it's an incredible sensation, and the views. I mean, we talked about the top of the top hat having a great view, but there's also great views anytime you're out on the water. You are in the middle of the gl- lagoon that is in the middle of Universal's Islands of Adventure. So you are surrounded by all kinds of cool environments. I wish, <laughs> I mean, you could never take a camera, but it would be so amazing to get like just a mental snapshot of that picture of uh, being on the lagoon and during that Mosasaur roll. Well, you know, Carrie, what? during the ride, they do take a picture of you, <gasps> which is available for purchase at the end of the ride. You're kidding. It is true. So you can take that mental snapshot home with yeah, you. Yeah, <gasps> it's, it's not of the surroundings though. It's of your face going, oh, uh, yeah. That's a good one. You know what? That is a memory that's going to last a lifetime. I think some of these perspectives I have are after riding it multiple times. Yeah. Because I would say the first time you ride it, you're just like holding on. Yeah, sure. You're just along for the ride. Yeah. Now that I've ridden it a few times, I'm like, oh, look at this. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But it's it's so exciting. It's so thrilling. It's so fast. Yes. So many maneuvers. Oh, and then you get back. It's awesome. You get back to the station. And then you want to do it all over again. Absolutely. Now, uh, like we said, there are some really cool uh, extra... Nuts and bolts about. Now, we did mention the height requirement. Yes. Height 51 requirement. inches or taller. 51 inches or taller. Um, talk to me about child swap. Yes. Is that available? If you are not 51 inches or taller, or if you just aren't up for the thrill of the hunt, yes, um, you can hang out in the child swap area. It's actually very conveniently located about midway through the queue next to the locker. So you actually wait with your family uh, in the queue. Uh, and then at that point where stuff goes in the locker, that's the split off point. Uh, where you and your your family will sit in the child swap area. They got uh, some nice cartoons on for you. There's a water fountain. That's very important. It's a big deal. Stay Um, hydrated. Yeah. And then once your family's done finishing the ride, uh, they exit back and they actually come right back past that room. Perfect. Uh, So it's very easy to kind of just swap in and tag out. And the and the next uh, group can go from your Boom. family. And, t- and take advantage of that. I mean, there's like there's seats in there. There's a changing table. I mean, you can kind of take a nice relaxing break when you're in that. David, yes. you also mentioned the lockers. Lockers. This is a really cool feature. Lockers are required, but they are very conveniently integrated into the queue. <gasps> what does that mean? So at a lot of our other attractions that use lockers, you you kind of have to go to the locker ahead of time, put all your stuff in, go on the ride, then you come back, get it out. These lockers are integrated into the queue, like halfway down the line, you go into the room where all the lockers are. Yep. So the cool thing is, is you actually get to keep your stuff with you, keep your phone with you for some really cool photo ops in the queue itself. Yep. Like the amazing raptors that you'll find in the queue that are so freaking cool. Amazing. Um, And then after that, you can safely put your stuff, put your phone, everything in the locker, uh, which again is required because it is a very inverting and thrilling ride. And it is complimentary during your ride. Yes, of course. So um, the cool thing is, is you put your stuff in one side. When you get out of the ride, you actually end up on the other side of that wall. So you're opening your locker so from the like other side. So it's like a pass through. Yeah. That's very smart. And so there's no crowding. There's no, you know, doubling back to get your stuff. You put it in on one side. You ride the ride. You come back down on the other side. Pump. They pop out the back side. They're Genius. actually organized really cool. They're organized by like color and dinosaur. So Aww. like that's how you remember what and section you're, you're learning in. as well. You are. It's like the parking garage. <laughs> the the ankylosaur section is Ooh. is closely defending my my phone. I love that. Yeah, that's great. Genius uh, innovation and integration into the queue system. Yes. Okay, so David, with all these cool features, it's got to be busy, right? Sometimes. Yeah, there are ways uh, that you can you can queue smartly, and oh. here's a great way to do it. Sometimes single rider is available, so you can take advantage of that line if you yes. are a, a single rider. Check. Sometimes Jurassic World Velocicoaster is available during early park admission. Yeah. So if that if you are eligible for early park admission and you really want to ride this, I suggest making it the first thing you do with your day during early park admission when it is available. Not a bad one to make a priority. Yes. Yeah. And again, if this is on the top of your list, you really want to make sure that you are uh, you are riding this and you want to check out those wait times. 
Check in with the official Universal Orlando app. You can see those wait times and you can even set yourself a reminder. For example, if you say, uh, I really only want to wait 60 minutes for Jurassic World Velocicoaster. Once that wait time gets to that time, it will remind you, give you a little, a little ding ding on your phone and then you can head on over there. And so, like I said, you queue up smartly. Use your time wisely. Carrie. But we could ramble all day about Jurassic World Velocicoaster. Sure could. But you know who knows a lot more about it? Hmm. Some of the people involved in creating it. I don't know if you remember from our uh, Jurassic Park episode and from our Islands of Adventure episode, but we're good friends with a couple people from creative named Shelby and Greg. I would say we're best friends if you really had to break it down. After today, we certainly are, yes. Definitely. Hey, let's toss it over to our friends Greg and Shelby for an even more thorough dive into Jurassic World Velocicoaster. And now we are joined in the studio with our very, very special guests, Greg and Shelby from Universal Creative. They've returned to us. <laughs> Woo! Uh, you guys were a part of some of uh, our like earliest episodes. I'm so glad you guys are back. I'm, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's really, funny. Really glad. It's like Velocicoaster <laughs> was kind of getting its start rise. We are both celebrating yeah. milestones and um, more time. I That's feel like right. It had like just opened when we were starting to I think so. record the podcast. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah, this is great. And they're both rocking their like yeah. amazing Velocicoaster. <laughs> See what Universal happens? Like Letterman jackets. jackets. Yeah, these are oh. cool. Yeah, this is why we did it. You know, <laughs> just for the, the jackets and the caps. You know, it was totally worth it. They're official. <laughs> all that work, <laughs> all that time. You got a jacket and a hat. Right. Good right. for you, man. Just well, uh, just as a recap for our listeners, can I can I just have you guys introduce yourselves? What is your your title at Universal Creative? Hey, um, my name is Gregory Hall. I am a creative director at Universal Creative. I am Shelby Honey, and I am uh, now an executive producer at Universal Creative. So we both got title bumps. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have some questions. Well, not questions. Not like a traditional interview. We are fans, David and I, Big of fans. Jurassic World Velocicoaster. And so we want to reminisce with you about the creation process, about um, some of your favorite moments. Um, I know you guys have worked together for a long time. So mm-hmm. I just want to pick your brains and just like, I don't know, deep dive on like the coolness of this attraction and how it kind of came to be. Sounds good. All right. So first question, how did it come to be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, it, it's it's funny. I've spent a lot of time looking back on it. I don't know how you feel, Greg, about like kind of the dominoes that had to happen to make Velocicoaster. And it's funny because it's, it's partly like the fans and what the fans want and what the community wanted right at that moment in time. Then the, just the effects of the pandemic, all of these different things all kind of came together. And I think made something so special. But where we started and where many things start with Universal Creative was we had uh, really a prompt from the company. uh, And before it had a name, before it even had a number, it had Iowa Thrill. That was what this project was called, Iowa Thrill. and uh, Standing for... Universal's Islands of Adventure. Islands of Adventure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Coaster. Got it. Cool. So we started looking at the sites that were available and very, very, very quickly honed in that the only place a new thrill attraction at Islands of Adventure could go was at Jurassic Park. Yeah, and yeah it was pretty awesome. So when I joined, um, Shelby had done all this research just on the statistics. You know, you, you start off with facts and it helps lead a starting point with the team. And what was beautiful about this ride is the team was so diverse. The team was so hungry and the team was filled with coaster enthusiasts as well. So everyone on the team, it was like built perfectly for this project. And we knew we had to get it right so that it influenced the future projects in the industry in general. So we have coaster track layout designers who have over 400 coasters in their, in their background. Wow. And when we're talking to each other day one, you start off with, it has to have this. It has to have this element. This element's not even in the United States. Um, wow. You know, and we were thinking beyond just Florida. We we're, we're trying to bring something that people in the United States have never seen before and people from around the world would want to fly down just to see. And, you know, originally the Incredible Hulk coaster, you know, when that first came out in 1999, it was breaking records. And then, you know, it's been a long time since, you know, the original Oz Adventures opened. So we wanted to do a modern take of that. You know, if a new generation was able to create their version of this ride that could compete with the top and have the new technology, what would we do? And it was pretty awesome. So when we looked at the layout, the, the cool thing about our job is, is is problem solving. And we had this plot of land, but you know, for what we wanted to do, that plot of land was smaller than a typical roller coaster. So we used it to our advantage where we were like, we have to leave that part of the land and just go over the water, go over sure. here, go underground. And um, awesome. it started evolving itself. And 
once that happened, uh, we knew we had something special. But then also, you know, with the universal DNA, we, we need to add a story and the theming. But we didn't want to just have that as like a backdrop. We wanted to fit the ride, you know. And that's introducing something to the coaster enthusiasts that they usually don't think about. Usually coaster enthusiasts are like, you know, I don't care about the theming, you know. Yeah. And More, are- <laughs> higher, further, faster, yeah. stronger. Yeah. Yeah. I only judge it based off of the layout. Yeah. And, you know, we're not, and I understand why. We all understood why. And we're, we really wanted to make sure that the theming enhanced the actual ride experience. And it just kept evolving, evolving after that. I get, it's, it's hard to tell a story on a roller coaster because you're going very fast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very loud. You're spinning around, going upside down. So, I guess, I guess that story comes out in a lot of different ways, right? The story mm-hmm. comes out in the, the setup, all of the amazing environment and the queue story and everything. And then also like the environment that you guys built around the roller coaster. So like the, the fact that we're in the Raptor paddock, we're going in and out of those rocks and we're going right by those Raptors and things like that. So talk about the, the theming and the story. Should we like go, go into it? I'm ready for some well, teeth. You want to start it off? Sure. So maybe we can just stroll through uh, a Jurassic World Velocicoaster. So maybe starting right at the front. So of course, we wanted this ride to have a huge presence all around the park and and a huge amount of consideration went into really where every maneuver went, but also how it looked, how it fit within the park. So coming over the bridge from Lost Continent or coming down um, from within Jurassic Park, we really, again, cr- Greg worked very closely to curate these really fantastic views. You, you notice there's there's not nets everywhere. Yeah. And, um, that was all part of how we actually designed it so that the coaster rolls a certain direction or this theming with rock work and theming with different elements that allowed us to not have nettings everywhere. And that makes it feel more immersive and uh, photogenic as well. We wanted to make sure that we didn't create a composition where you could only take a picture from one spot Mm -hmm. and then that's it. You know, you could discover new areas or you could be really creative and I think that created a culture as well. A lot of photographers came out, videographers came out, people with brand new phones, with new cameras that wanted to <laughs> oh, try yeah. it out. Yeah. I think uh, Throw it in action mode. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> and something I love about again Greg's approach to design too is that I've been with like people like I I can never get a good picture of anything. I can never get a good and then like everyone feels like they mm-hmm. are able to capture something beautiful mm-hmm. and spectacular about Velocicoaster. And I think that's, again, just speaks to the beautiful design process. Yeah. You know, and it, what was challenging really was the newer Jurassic World films weren't out yet when we started. The first one came out, but the second and third, we had no clue what they were going to be or which direction it was going to go in the beginning until we, eventually we started talking to the Universal Pictures. But we were already starting the roller coaster and making rules just to get to the next stage. My first time riding Jurassic World Velocicoaster was with you, Greg, yeah. in the front row. And it was amazing to walk through, I know, I, I got like a <laughs> VIP treatment. I deserve a jacket. It was for the pod. <laughs> yeah, I was right. honored. For the pod. <laughs> Hashtag for the pod. We, I was walked through all the, the like sort of the step by steps, the scenes, maybe, uh, if you call it. And I was so impressed with the, the process of the, the tension that was built. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked to, it, it feels like you, you have to have a certain security clearance and, mm-hmm. and they're telling you, you know, about the, like, it's safe, you know, like that's the cool thing about the films, the franchise, right? And like, then you Owen's think it's going, safe. it's not safe. It's totally Why not. Are you doing that? It was just such a great way to build up to the ride itself. So I'm wondering if maybe we can go through the attraction. You guys can walk us scene by scene and, yeah. and talk about maybe the feelings that all those scenes were meant to evoke. Do you want to start the lobby? You know what I do like about what you just said is the clarity of the story. And it wasn't overly complicated where the guests lose themselves and then they ride a ride, but they can't identify what was going on, what was happening. You know, it was a self-aware ride. You know, it was actually mimicking what was happening in the park where the theme park wants to give more thrill to the guests. What do we do? And that was literally what we were doing. We were giving the guests more thrill. It was very relatable. So when we started in the lobby, you know, we wanted to set the tone and really energize it. And mm-hmm. as you travel through the rest of the queue, it gets more intimidating, you know, which mimics what the guests actually feel anyway. I remember my first roller coaster ever was actually the Incredible Hulk. So I remember that first time. Wow. Nice. And when I was a guest and I was just a kid, you know, I was watching the video on the screen. It was really cool animations, but also the rumble on the other side of the wall yeah. was the real thing. And that yeah. was terrifying me. 
And that's something you can't get in a movie theater. It's a real giant machine that you're going to strap into <laughs> making the walls rumble. So, like, mimicking that, actually enhancing that, you know, the, the overall immersion. So we begin the story. You know, we go into the portal code. We have, we have to have Mr. DNA. Yep. You got to. We have to. Yep. And we're so glad that happened. And, you know, the, our partners made it come to life. We just wanted to excite people like this is the attraction. This is what Engine wants the guests to feel like. You know, we have this giant statue showing the, the heroic raptors, but the, the roller coaster is part of the statue as yeah. well. And we just begin with that. Here's the energy of welcome to this brand new attraction, the best thrill ride that Engine can make. And then as you go through, you start to question engine's ethics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I think, again, just being of the storytelling and the storytelling of the space, too. We start very big in the portico, what we're calling in the lobby where the uh, raptor sculpture is. And then we start going into a theme park trick of compression, right? So yep. it starts to, right from there, kind of build the tension. The, the cue starts to snake a little bit more. And again, we're trying to go very, very corporate, cold, concrete, so that when you get the reveal of seeing the paddock, you realize that nature's king here, right? So mm. a lot of these little subtle things are the power uh, and the control of this very sterile Jurassic world up against nature as kind of a very, it's a theme as, as well within the attraction. So from there, we do some very tight turns, starting to get very dark, the light's starting to get dimmer, and then we come up on the raptor window, and that is where guests can look in and see truly the 70 mile per hour launch of the, the coaster, mm. uh, and then you get to see some of our raptors chase right on by. Some fun facts about that media. So again, worked very closely with the filmmakers on that. Uh, those are truly the, the raptors you see in the films. And that media also has some variation. So you'll never really oh, see the same okay. one in the same sequence. So mm -hmm. um we want to make sure, you know, we knew people would kind of wait and they're like, oh, and that window, that window's where I saw the thing. The next time you see it, it's a different window or it's, over, it's you know, Charlie stops, awesome. Blue stops. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Wow. I remember oh, we, were, I go we were filming a commercial for Velocicoaster. All the actors, they just ran into that room and just stayed in there for an hour just having fun. <laughs> to watch just every window. watching it over and over again. I remember close. when Greg and I were walking through, the, the, the raptor kind of like snarls in the window and his breath hits the mm -hmm. window. And I was like, oh, that's like in the first first film with the kitchen it's right and he was like that's that was, that was the actually movie. the exact animation from the film i felt very cool that i recognized yeah. you got lots <laughs> of points yeah, that, that was yeah i remember you recognizing it and that was amazing <laughs> Because or maybe it's sad because I've seen Jurassic Park that many times that I, I recognize the, that. The exact animation, <sighs> very you cool. know, we wanted to feel as authentic as possible, and we made that happen. And on our VFX team, there's people who actually worked on the original first Jurassic wow. Park movie, and oh they knew gosh. <laughs> I, I guess, again, the theme of this, everyone should know, top to bottom, everyone who worked on this project loved it. And I think, again, that's kind of the, the can... X factor is that <laughs> truly, truly the, the amount of love at everyone was huge. You know, Something also pretty cool about that room, that room and the actual low station, we redesigned the entire queue to make those two moments happen. And the result in that was also the lockers. We wanted to do double side lockers, but now we had to in order for that to, to flow correctly. But it was just a moment we couldn't let go. And moving on, we go into our Raptor, muzzled Raptors. Right, right, oh right. Oh my gosh. In my um, mind. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Right. It was interesting because when we were thinking about the muzzle raptors, we couldn't imagine the impact it really has in the queue, like how special it is to really have a moment to appreciate and look at them. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel the breath, the sound effects, the small details, there's details that are in there that, you know, you wouldn't be able to see even on a video if you saw a video of them in person. There's small details that you could appreciate. The smell? There was like a smell a bit. Yeah, there was a, there's a scent yeah. in there and we have fun making that add up we had a construction trailer and we just made the whole thing stink when we we're coming up with the first prototypes with the smell we raptor like, breath wow yeah version one wasn't this, <laughs> wasn't that pleasant but we got there version 20 <laughs> the idea of that room is it's like uh it's like an, an examination room right because some of the lockers have like right. medical things right okay cool yeah, we, sure. we were playing with the story beat, too, because it's like you want to come face-to-face -face with the Raptors. You saw them this way in the first film. But really the story we landed with is that 
This is a living zoological exhibit mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. happens to have a roller coaster in it. The same maintenance that the roller coaster goes through, presumably these raptors are as well, and the safety of the raptors being, even in Jurassic World, a high level of importance. So of course, yeah. just making sure that after each run, uh, every raptor is taken care of. And Dr. Wu mm-hmm. in the media in that room, which again, people just are so captivated by the dinosaurs, and I can't blame them, <laughs> um, does explain that after each run, the raptors are kind of given an overall physical because they are very important assets themselves. Absolutely. Yeah, so you see the raptors, you see the tools that they use to take care of the raptors, train the raptors. So there's actual tools that were from the film that are in that room with them. They're incredible. Like, <laughs> if, if you didn't know the dinosaurs don't exist anymore, <laughs> they're just yes. such realistic animated figures. And I mean, there's animated figures all over the park with various complexities. But like, I feel like there's so many elements built into those raptor heads and the fact that we are like so close to them. Yeah. You know? That you don't get to on the other rides. On the other rides, you're you're blazing by them on the ride. And like the fact that you're standing there in the queue, you have a moment to just check them out, see it, see them move, see them breathe, see them rattle the cage. And like yeah. I just think it's awesome. I tell everybody, but I'm like, you have to go through the queue. You have to see these things. For we, sure. had to, we had to use new technology just to bring them as close as they are to the guests. So, you know, that's something that's special as well. Our executive producer Michelle said that her nephew wants to go through the queue just to see he he's too small to ride <laughs> ride Jurassic World Velocicoaster, but just to see the Raptors and to get that up close moment. I mean, yeah. It's talking about some of the like little human moments that have made Velocicoaster <laughs> over the last two years so special. It's it's those families that you do see who just like kind of peel off and they're just there with the raptors and they're gonna be there with the raptors for a while. Go on <laughs> ahead, go on ahead. And uh, yeah, I think it, we're it's lovely just to see how people truly do resonate with those raptors. And yes, definitely, I know operations has even said when someone comes in lower height, they are able to like let them go to a little raptor paddock tour. I love that. That's- like that that's a huge sure. deal. Like yeah. that speaks to how well you guys designed it and how even though it's not maybe height wise a family experience, there are elements for every part of the family. We were very aware of how all age Jurassic is. So making yeah. sure that it was a stunning view and something so aspirational. And again, I think the other thing that's been cool in two years is seeing kids who were not tall enough now starting to uh, be yeah. tall oh, enough and sure. get there and see how this has been truly like the big thing in people's little kids' minds for two years and now they're getting to get on it. Going back to making memories, the guests have a lot of memories and a lot of shareable ones you know you go to the park with your family but sometimes your family members who just choose not to take that risk yet on a thrill ride they still want to have the essence of sharing that memory with you or be able to have that conversation and the queue definitely allows for a, a very positive very fun conversation for someone who didn't even ride the ride We have a couple minutes left because we are getting the experience to head over to Universal's Great Movie Escape, which is Jurassic World (laughs) themed. And we get to hang out with Shelby and Craig uh, for another iteration of Jurassic World. Before we go, speaking to your, you know, making memories, what respectively, I guess, are your favorite memories of working on the attraction or experiencing the attraction or something you witnessed on the attraction? Just kind of a really standout moment. Uh, I can go first. So I think for me, again, this whole experience was so lovely. The the team, it's it's been funny, again, in two years, being able to work with different teams and it, every team has their own flavor. But like truly, I think it's because we were here working in the existing parks. Uh, Again, some of the global challenges happening at that point in the world as well, we felt a a little isolated, but in a way it was great. Honestly, for me, I will always, always remember the very first ride because it was truly peak of the pandemic and we were taking off our hard hats because we were still in active construction zone. We got permission to sit on the coaster. And I think what was so funny about it is that we were all, you can just imagine the electricity the first time we're riding this thing. That's amazing. And we had to stagger seat at the time, right? So one, you're riding a brand new coaster alone in your (laughs) row. And I think what was so funny about it is that, again, we got off and we all just wanted to hug and high five so badly, oh, no. but we couldn't. Yeah. So it was just this like very fun, like we're all just like ah, in our little square Electrified. social distancing, like so electric. And I think <laughs> that'll be a moment I'll remember forever, riding a roller coaster for the first time. Yeah, wow. I remember that. We had no clue what the ride was going to be like. I mean, even though we watched a million simulations, you, you just never know until you're on it. And I was nervous. I was shaking. And like you say, it was three o'clock in the morning. We're, we're looking at our phones and we're like, when do we go? Is it ready? Is it ready for us to do it? And, you know, there's even days before we're, you know, it was canceled. Like, we're not riding this time today. And if I think about memory now, you know, we're almost at the two year anniversary. And now when I look back, it's, it's almost like a collective memory with even the people who are watching the blogs and the bloggers and the team. It's, it's hard to explain how un- unique that situation was. Where where we were designing the entire attraction almost in a fishbowl. We couldn't hide the attraction. And we were telling everyone it was a churro stand. And 
Right. And then, you know, we would work all day sweating. And then you would come home and you'll see an edited version of your entire day. Wow. <laughs> in like a 20-minute video. And it's like, wow, it's, it's way more action packed when, when it's like eight hours is consolidated <laughs> 20 minutes. Yeah. And just reading the skepticism, like, oh, I hope this happens or I hope they don't mess this up. And you know, okay, we did the right thing. That's going to happen. We just can't respond, but that's going to happen. It was a learning moment, understanding the connection between who we are and who the guests are. We were representing them and we were able to deliver on their wishes and actually show them more than what they're expecting. And, you know, it was a very humbling thing to to look back at. Amazing. You guys knocked it out of the park. It was (laughs) awesome. Cool. Guys, we got to put your Jurassic World expertise to the test. Oh, man. Because we're going to go, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know know what to expect. We haven't been to Universal's great movie Escape yet. Okay, forevermore, I have to have my first Jurassic World experience with Greg in the future. <laughs> Jurassic World, Lost Coaster, yeah. now onto Universal's Great Movie Space. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. Oh my God! You guys! No, don't, no. That was a blast. I know. I know. Universal's Great Movie Escape, Jurassic World Escape. We escaped. We did, we did a great job. It was very Narrowly. helpful to have uh, Shelby and Greg there. I think they are. They were dino experts. You're absolutely right. They're also escape experts. They took charge. That's what they did. And I was like, no wonder these guys are in charge of stuff over there at Universal Creative. Exactly. I'd follow them anywhere. They're amazing. They could lead me on a project any day. Yeah. Literally. Uh, That was so much fun. We don't want to get too in depth, but uh, keep an ear out for uh, our future episode where we talk specifically about our experiences at Universal's Great Movie Escape, and we'll be talking all about... Uh, that incredible time we had. I can't wait. For now, yes, we got to go back to Jurassic World Velocicoaster. We got to b- 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 break it down. One quick thing I wanted to touch on. Okay. This ride is full of, normally we call them Easter eggs, but for this episode, we should call them dino dinosaur eggs. eggs. <laughs> I love that. Hit me with some, di- don't hit me with some dino eggs. I'm going to throw a dino throw egg Throw it you. out. Uh, there are so many cool just details throughout the queue, throughout the ride. Mm-hmm. I mean, the one you brought up during the interview with Greg is so much fun that the, the Velociraptor like blowing steam on the on the glass and everything. Oh my gosh. Being the same animation from the movie is so cool. Yeah, he said they literally took those frames from yeah. the original film. That's really cool. For people that have been fans of this franchise for 20 years, that's a big deal. Uh, in the next room after those windows, mm-hmm. uh, there's a bunch of stuff like kind of in these lockers and these display cases on the wall. Oh yeah. There's a, a model of the ride vehicle, which is really cool. There's a mm-hmm. bunch of books that are like authored by the characters in the movies. Dr. Like, Ellie Sattler. Yeah, Dr. Ian Malcolm's book. Mm-hmm. Every, they're all in there, which is really cool. One of my favorite Easter eggs is the the Osprey that yes. uh, nested on the top hat when they were building. During construction, yeah. Yes, if you haven't checked this out, uh, listen to our Universal's Islands of Adventure episode, uh, but also do some research because there is cool stuff online about it. And Osprey nested, and they paid homage to the uh, Osprey in the actual ride queue. Yeah. Uh, there's like a, a little placard that that talks about the Osprey, and, and uh, that was a really fitting addition. Yeah, and then when you're on the ride itself, there's things to look out for. Uh, the one that comes to mind is oh, there's some cool. Speaking of eggs, on the on the top of like the rock outcropping when oh, you're going yeah. through, the, there's like pteranodon eggs, mm-hmm. like a pteranodon nest up a there. Nest, kind of hard to see. Yep, because uh, you're going by them pretty fast. Very. And then another one that's kind of hard to catch as well. It's right after you do like an inverted loop, and you're like kind of facing back towards the ground to come back down. There's a bag of dino chow. And that is a reference to uh, the attraction that was once in that area long ago, uh, which was the Triceratops Encounter. Wait, I didn't know that. What is the Dino Chow thing? So the Triceratops Encounter, it was this walkthrough experience. Back, This is the old days of, of Jurassic Park at Universal Islands of Adventure. What? And uh, it was a walkthrough experience. You walk through, you could kind of see like some research stuff set up. You're like walking through the jungle. And then you come into this dinosaur pen and there's like a, a dinosaur handler there. And there were giant animated figure of a Triceratops. It was like a full-size... Straight-up dinosaurs. Dinosaur. And I will say it was one of the coolest, like, like it felt real. The dinosaur moved, it breathed, it made sounds. The, the handler would, like, feed it some grass and it would eat it. Wait, now, I, I have seen, I have met the Triceratops at Universal Studios Hollywood. A little different. Okay. So that's that's sort of similar to our, how we have the Velociraptor encounter here. Yes. So they have that there as well, and they also have like a walk around Triceratops. It's really cool. Wow. But this is predating that even. What? Yeah. I'm so, I you know what? It's okay. It's okay because even though 
We don't have the Triceratops encounter for me oh, no. to enjoy anymore. I still can enjoy Jurassic World Velocicoaster, which is doubly cool. This is a very worthy replacement. <laughs> I love that. I love the the homage all, with the dino all tail. kindness to our friends, the Triceratops. 100%. Is, uh, this is much more thrilling. Yes. Love that. That's very cool. There's so much cool stuff. Keep your eyes open. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's many more things that I haven't even noticed. Again, huge props to our friends, uh, Greg and Shelby, for all of their design prowess and uh, creative knowledge and and really putting their hearts and souls, them and then the entire team, uh, into this amazing attraction for us to enjoy. All right. Time to wrap it up. We could get coming at Raptor you. Raptor it up. Whoa. <laughs> coming at you with a take five. R -r 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 Rewind. <laughs> Number one, Jurassic World Velocicoaster is a high speed, thrilling roller coaster located in Jurassic Park at Universal's Islands of Adventure. It's the apex predator of roller coasters. Nice. Number two, there are some need to knows. Uh, know that lockers are required during your ride. They're also complimentary during your ride. Uh, you have to be 51 inches or taller to experience this attraction. There is Child Swap available. Child Swap is really a cush little place you can hang out. There's a, a water fountain, there's seats, a changing table, uh, some cartoons on TV. Take advantage of that and uh, use it when it is available. Number three, head into the Jurassic Park Discovery Center for even more fun. Uh, I love it in there. It's one of my favorite spots in the park. They have super cool, like, interactive displays. Uh, you can play dinosaur trivia. Uh, there's some dinosaur, like, models set up and displays. Uh, they have the really cool egg hatchery, which we've talked about before, which is a super cool experience, especially for the little ones. Um, there's also the retail for Velocicoaster is inside that location as well. So all the cool Jurassic World Velocicoaster merch, all the great blue, the Velociraptor stuff. Uh, and then if you head upstairs, you can actually find burger digs up there for some great food. Another Jurassic Park merchandise location. They got some great amber jewelry in there. That's really cool. So definitely head inside the Discovery Center. Check out all the awesome stuff in there. Number four, there are some great ways to get in. You got to go to this attraction. So let right. us give you some tips. Use that official Universal Orlando app to see those wait times. You can even set yourself a reminder uh, to check in on that ride and see what the wait times are. The coaster is sometimes available during early park admission. So if you are eligible for that, take advantage of that early park admission option when it is available, as well as the single rider line. Sometimes that is available too. So you can experience that solo uh, and maybe get in a little bit quicker. So check out all those ways you can get into this awesome coaster. And number five, let's leave them with some fun facts, Carrie. Let's do it. Uh, my first tip, ride it like during the day and during the night. There's, Absolutely. There's two like really cool different experiences mm -hmm. because at night, like it's so dark, the track is so dark and you really feel like you're just flying through that thing and the, the coaster itself lights up and yes. it's so cool. Also consider waiting for the front row because that ride in the dark in the front row. Oh yes. Chef's kiss. Very cool perspective from the front, especially when you go up that that big tall top hat. Uh, and just the last thing, have, it's really cool that you can have your phone with you, like mm -hmm. right up until the, the locker portion of the ride. So you're going to get great photos of those super cool Velociraptors that are in the queue with you. Um, you can you can take great pictures outside of the ride as well. There's all these great perspectives from from the bridge where you're going under one section. Uh, you can line up pretty closely to the, like the Mosasaur roll, or or you can capture your friends coming down off that top hat and get a great picture of their faces as they're screaming their way down. So, yeah, take pictures. Tell your friends. You know what? Happy almost two years, Jurassic World Velocicoaster. You've certainly changed uh, the skyline over Universal Islands of Adventure. Yep. You have changed uh, the direction of thrill rides, certainly for Universal Orlando Resort. Big thanks to everybody uh, that helped out on this episode. Thanks to Shelby and Greg from Creative for stopping by. And, and a big shout out to everybody at Universal Creative that, that made such an incredible attraction out there. Great job, guys. Nice work, y'all. Thanks to our executive producer, Michelle. Thank you to our amazing audio tech, Grayson. And thank you, guys. Stay tuned. <laughs> To learn more about Universal Parks and Resorts, head to our show notes for links to our Discover Universal blog for a more in-depth look around our destination. While you're there, sign up to receive emails that will include articles, videos, and this podcast delivered right to your inbox to prepare for your next vacation. If you liked what you heard, leave us a review and don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. 